Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Tim Bidermias. You'd be forgiven for thinking that Samantha Harvey has visited outer space a few dozen times. Her new book, Orbital, is all about the lives of astronauts on the International Space Station. And while it's a work of fiction, Harvey worked diligently to capture the detail and imagery of what it means to be of this world, but away from it. And all the beauty that that allows you to see. Harvey says that's by design. And she tells All Things Considered host Ari Shapiro that she's long been obsessed with space and just how to capture the language of living there. This message comes from Apple Card. Reboot your credit card with Apple Card. It gives you unlimited daily cash back that can earn 4.35% annual percentage yield when you open a savings account. A high yield, low effort way to grow your money with no fees. Apply for Apple Card now in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. There's a long tradition of novels that take place in a single day. Authors from James Joyce to Virginia Woolf have used that frame to tell a story. In the new book Orbital by Samantha Harvey, a single day has 16 sunrises and sunsets. Her characters are astronauts aboard the International Space Station. Samantha Harvey, welcome to All Things Considered. Hello, it's lovely to be here. Have you always been interested in space? I am not what you would probably call a space nerd by any stretch. I've always been interested in the experience of astronauts, I think. Um, And when I was much younger, I collected quotes from astronauts. I would sit in the library and go through books in pre-internet days and collect things that astronauts had said about being in space. And I was always really fascinated by that without really knowing why. Um, Can I just ask if you had one favorite quote from those days? They were also kind of moving, but there's one about, it was a Russian cosmonaut whose name I I can't remember because they all sort of, all the quotes have run together a bit, but Mm -hmm. he said that he had never known the meaning of the word round until he had been in space and looked back at the earth. Wow. And that that seems to be a really common theme that there's a, a sense of one's senses and one's perception being redefined by being in space. It's not just that the things have a certain clarity, but our terms of reference are redefined. And then much later in life, you know, now that we can access images of the Earth from space, there are so many of them on the NASA website and you know on YouTube and so on. You can just watch entire Earth orbits um, hmm. from the ISS. And that's what I started doing. And I was so overwhelmed by the extraordinary beauty and strangeness of our planet that that that's what prompted this idea to write about it. You know, to think this is a sort of an element of nature writing, really, that, huh. that I don't see happening. So that was the impetus for the book. Early on in the book, you talk about the challenge that one of the astronauts faces trying to describe her experience to people back on Earth. And you write, she finds she often struggles for things to tell people at home because the small things are too mundane and the rest is too astounding and there seems to be nothing in between. And when I read that, I wondered if it also described the struggle that you faced as an author writing this book. It is a a sort of weird set of contradictions from what I can gather about being in space that you on one hand are traveling you know at 17 and a half thousand miles an hour around the earth so you're in this kind of extraordinary physical situation where you're you're seeing 16 days and 16 nights in 24 hour period and you're floating your view is of the earth and of the cosmos and there's nothing and nobody else around you at the same time you have to keep to a very very set schedule and you have to do the dusting and the vacuuming and you know make your meals and fix the toilet and you know all all of these things and there isn't much between that very routine mundaneness and the kind of gobsmacking or inspiring description evading reality of what's going on around you I really enjoyed that from a writerly point of view, you know, that everything is is rich and charged when you write about it because, you know, even dusting in space has its own, 
yeah. it, it's, its own strangeness. So it's everything has that kind of sheen of, of strangeness and otherliness. And I found that very rich to write about. As readers and viewers and consumers of media, I think we're so accustomed to stories in space that have high drama, disasters, aliens, murder, explosions, whatever the case may be. In this novel, the only cataclysms take place on Earth. Someone's mother dies. A super typhoon approaches Southeast Asia. Tell me about that decision you made as a writer. Yeah, it was always really clear to me that I wanted to write space realism, I suppose, rather than sci-fi. And that that hadn't really been done. I mean, I hadn't seen that done before. And that's surprising because uh, space, inhabiting space, is a reality for, for humans. You know, we have been continually inhabiting low Earth orbit for 23 years now. Um, that is a, a, a daily experience for or a very select group of people, but still, that's very much within the realms of reality and realism. So that's what I wanted to to kind of capture in this book, a, a sense of nature writing about this wilderness and to see what it would be like to write about space without the projections that we that we usually put on it. I think, you know, so much sci-fi comes from the unknownness of space and our wish to project our fears and our hopes onto it and I wanted to take all of that away and start with a blank canvas almost and simply see it as a natural environment that humans are inhabiting. The effect is very poetic especially as these astronauts see the same oceans and continents and seas and mountain ranges pass below them again and again. Did you think about this as writing poetry in a way? It, yes in a way yeah, I think I probably did. I mean, I do write poetry too. And you have this incredible image that you want to try to put into words. And it's quite difficult. It, it almost wants to um, evade any description. And, and so I had to reach, you know, for for poetry, I guess, to try to put into words some of those, you know, the light, the colour the sheer strangeness of what they were seeing. So I, I think that's always on my mind as a writer. I'm always trying to think what would be exactly the right word here. I always have a thesaurus open when I'm writing, mm. trying to find exactly the thing I want to say. I wanted it more than anything to be a book about beauty and about joy and about rapture and the rapture of looking at something so beautiful that it also happens to be our home hmm. astronauts have spoken and written a lot about the way returning to earth changed them physically psychologically after a visit to space do you feel changed in similar ways um i i do i think i feel very moved and i every time i look at those images of the earth i, I feel a renewed sense of care for the planet and um not just caring, that sounds so sincere, but just sort of, isn't it extraordinary that we live here? Isn't that incredible? You just want to show it to people and, and say, you know, this is, this is what we have. And also, isn't it weird? And aren't we alone? And isn't it freaky? And, you know, all, all of those things. I think every time I look at it, I feel changed by it. Whether overall I do, I, I don't think that my experience looking at videos can be profound enough for that, that real kind of constitutional change, unfortunately. Well, Samantha Harvey, it's been lovely talking with you. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. This message comes from NPR sponsor Gillian Flynn Books, an imprint from best-selling author Gillian Flynn and the publisher of One of the Good Guys by acclaimed thriller writer Araminta Hall. After two young women vanish in a remote seaside town, nobody is who they seem in this twisty psychological thriller about gender and power. Perfect for fans of Gone Girl and Promising Young Woman, One of the Good Guys is available wherever books are sold. Support for NPR and the following message come from Sattva. Sattva luxury mattresses are every bit as elegant as the most expensive brands, but because they're sold online, they're about half the price. Visit slash NPR and save an additional $200.